There's a popular saying that's attributed to Phil Carlton. There are only two hard things in computer science, cache invalidation and naming things. Don't worry, I don't have a clue what cache invalidation is and we're not gonna talk about it, but I can't tell you how right he is about naming things. Throughout the past 30 or so episodes, I've been working on a project that I've since realized I didn't name correctly. In today's episode, I'm going to refactor my code to reflect a better name, and we'll talk about how our reproducible practices of using make and version control can help us out. But before we get going too far, I wanted to let you know that I'm Pat Schloss, and this is Code Club, where we learn about reproducible practices to improve our data analysis skills. Please be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell icon so you know when the next episode is released. Alrighty, let's get going. For the past 32 episodes or so, I've been investigating what I've been calling Amplicon Sequence Variants, or ASVs. ASVs are the rage in microbial ecology right now. People want to use each 16S RNA gene sequence to represent a different bacterial group. As we've shown, there's a significant risk of splitting a single cell into multiple groups because a genome can have multiple different ASVs. Furthermore, we've also shown that an ASV can appear in multiple species. Not good, eh? To do this analysis, I've been using data obtained from the RNDB, which provides the 16S RNA gene sequences for thousands of bacterial genomes. Because we trust those genome sequences, we've been treating each sequence as a distinct ASV. The problem, though, is that in actual application, like if I'm sequencing 16S genes from a soil sample, I don't have as much confidence in those data as I do from the genome sequences. So when people generate ASVs using popular tools like Data2, Unoise, Deblur, or Mother's Own Precluster, they allow for a bit of slop to clump together sequences that are within a few bases of each other because they, are no, they know there's some sequencing error. Who cares, right? Well, there's conflicting jargon in the field. Some call these things Amplicon Sequence Variants, or ASVs, as we have been, and others use Exact Sequence Variants, or ESVs. I think most people use them interchangeably because they haven't thought too deeply about what the names imply, and they haven't really dug into the methods. Considering the methods allow for some slop because of residual sequencing error, I will start to referring the sequences from the clean genomic data that we've been working work with as ESVs because they don't allow for any slop. The other data that has some slop we'll call ASVs. In the next few episodes, we'll go on to looking at how we can include some of that slop in those units, which again, I'll start calling ASVs. We'll talk about how we'll calculate the ASVs in the next episode or two, but to get ready for that, we need to replace ASV with ESV throughout the analysis. I'm sure people are closing the video in droves right now and running away from YouTube. Hold on. <laughs> Although there's a lot of find all, replace all to make this change, we'll also see how we can use make and get to help us refactor our code. We'll see how we can convince make to keep our intermediate and secondary files, how we can use patterns to tidy up our rules in make, and how we can use phony rules in make to build a bunch of targets all at once. We'll also use git to protect ourselves in case we get overzealous in changing or deleting anything. Please check out the blog post that accompanies this video where you'll find instructions on catching up, reference notes, and links to supplemental material. The link to the blog post for today's episode is below in the notes. So as you see, I've already created an issue for today's uh, work uh, that we're gonna refactor the project to indicate that we've been working with ESVs rather than ASVs. And then we wanna use the refactored code to go ahead and rebuild everything, regenerate all the data and all the analysis. Uh, in future episodes, of course, we'll come back and we'll work with ASVs. Okay, so we're gonna create a branch uh, for our issue. The other benefit of having these issues is uh, these issue branches is that if I to royally screw everything up, I can burn the branch to the ground and I haven't lost anything. Of course, we can do that with um, anything and get even without those issue branches, but it's kind of compartmentalizes our changes a little bit more. I'll go ahead and use Atom to open up uh, where we are for today. So within Atom, I'm gonna do some kind of brute force across the project changes. Uh, and we'll do that with um, the find in project. So if you do shift command F, um, that will open up this tab. And so you'll know you're there because it says find in project. Um, and so in the project, I'm gonna do ASV, all caps, and I'm gonna click on these uh, letters over here to match the case. And I'm gonna replace that with ESV. And 
Um, I'm going to put in exclamation point dot uh, star dot md. And so this should change everything except for the markdown documents. Um, those I don't really care about because I'm going to end up deleting them or regenerating them anyway. I can do find all. And we see that there's 60 results in five files. So if I click on these little triangles or pointers, I see that those changes are in my exploratory files and my readme files. So I'll go ahead and change those. Uh, yes. And then I'm going to do ASV, ESV in lowercase, find all, um, replace all. Of course, doing this one by one would just be horribly painful. Um, I think there's also some in my um, R script. So if I search then in my um, startup R files, maybe I'll remove uh, the case sensitivity. Um, doesn't seem to have found anything in um, an R file. Maybe if I'll do code forward slash R. Nope, doesn't have it there. Okay. Um, I don't quite believe that. Um, but I guess maybe it already had done it. Oh, yeah, because I said don't change things in a markdown file, but change everything else. So we see here convert count table to tibble, already changed ASV to ESV, count unique seeks. Um, did it here as well. And one of the nice things about Atom is that if things are under version control, it's turning things that have changed to this kind of brownish mustard color, right? Um, so that is good. Um, so I want to double check my readme file um, because in here I had said how many ESVs. Um, and so I want to say um, ESVs or ASVs kind of getting ready for looking at ASVs. And I think this all looks pretty good. I've got some extra text here that I think I'll get rid of. I'm not sure what that was even about. I'll save that. Um, this all looks pretty good. Um, oh, I'll change the title to utility of ESVs and ASVs. Okay, so I'll save that, close that. So one of the things that I'd also like to do is if I look at data v19, um, I see that I've got these RNDB count tibble files. So I'd like these to be rndb.esv.countTibble because down the road we'll also have ASVs. And so I'd like to be able to keep two separate files. Maybe we'll wind up joining them together. But for now, I want to work with those as ESVs. So I think I set those in my make file. So we, we create the file in count table to tibble. Um, and this takes an input file name and an output file name from our make file. And so if we look at... Um, where was it? Convert here. Um, then let's see. This could be ESV dot count tibble, and that's in processed. And we'll do the same thing here. ESV. I'll do some copying and pasting. Um, that's pooling. That's the pooled file. Um, and here is uh, the individual files for the individual regions. So I'll do esv.countTibble, and um, that all looks good. Um, and so perhaps we need to modify count unique seeks.sh. Double check that. Um, and so that takes in the target. So it's taking the name from the file. And I think that is good shape. Um, and I think everything is good there. All right, so we'll save that and we'll save our make file. Now, one of the things that we need to do is there's a lot of stuff that we need to clean up. So again, if I do git status, um, I see I've modified all these files. And uh, something I notice is that some of our exploratory files have ASV in them rather than ESV. So I can change those by doing get mv and so by using get with mv then we're keeping track of the old version of the file so get mv this to this but i'm going to change this to an, the a to an e <laughs> um, and that was uh, the coverage one and so we also want to change taxa overlap and return that second asv to an esv and then there's one more here this commonness and dominance one and we'll change that to an E. And I think we're good. And we can see that it's now keeping track of the renaming. Very good. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and commit these changes. 
And we can always revise the commit. But what the commit allows us to do is to um, potentially roll back any changes to this point uh, going forward if we just totally botch everything up. So I will go ahead and do git add exploratory, everything in exploratory, my make file, my readme, uh, uh, rmd file, and my code, stuff in my code. And so that's all uh, staged. So I'll say git commit dash m rename files from ASV to ESV and maybe not files, but rename ASVs to ESVs. Um, oh, I forgot a closing quote, so I'll put that in. And as we see from the my inability to type. Um, as we see from this issue 33 tag, uh, it's green, so everything is good to go, and we're in good shape. All right, so now what I want to do is start burning things down, start deleting things. And um, uh, so let's go ahead and remove uh, data um, that's in the variable regions and the things that start with rndb. So I'll remove all that. And so if I look at data v4, say, it's empty. Um, and if I look at data processed, I want to get rid of that also. So we'll move data processed RNDB. And I also want to get rid of all the exploratory stuff. Um, so you might say, well, maybe we should keep that stuff under version control too, kind of updating the changes. But um, we effectively are because we're going to be regenerating a lot of that stuff. I guess those files that went from ASV to ESV will be gone, but eh, that's cool. So what we can then do is remove um, exploratory and then star.md. And so that's anything that ends with period MD, uh, the rendered files, as well as I'm um, going to do rm-rf. And so that's recursive and force uh, exploratory, anything that ends in files. So that's all the images uh, that were there. And so if we look at this, um, we see um, a lot of stuff got tossed. And so again, this is why I really like uh, using git status because I noticed that I'm accidentally removing my readme file. So I can do git restore um, exploratory uh, readme. And my autocomplete tab isn't working because it's not there, right? Dot MD. And let's make sure that everything looks right. So we, all these things I've just deleted we should be able to regenerate using make. And if I open up my make file, um, you'll recall that whenever I made one of these new rules, I got a little bit uneasy because I'm basically repeating the same chunk over and over again, but changing the names of the files. At the top of this, I have a little reminder of how you write a rule in a make file. So you have a target, so like the file you want. So say I want this data references Silva seed reference alignment. That's the target. That's what we want the computer to build. And then after the colon, we have all the prerequisites. Then on the next line, after a tab, we basically have the instructions for going from the prerequisites to the target. We call that the recipe. And as I scan through here, you'll notice that in various places, I have these percent signs. And up here, we'd use those percent signs to represent the different variable regions that we wanted. And so that is kind of like a wild card and um, a special kind of wild card in make. So what I'm going to think about doing is if I do the percent sign dot MD, so basically match anything that starts with, I'm sorry, anything that ends in dot MD, and I'm going to then, as a dependency, require that same pattern, but ending in rmd, right? And so that will take the R markdown document and render it to the markdown document. And I also then want uh, these two files, which I'm going to copy and paste up here. Um, you maybe notice that um, this first rule doesn't require uh, the genome ID taxonomy file. If I overspecify the prerequisites, it's not a big deal. Uh, the other thing that you'll notice is that at the end of these lines where there's a lot of prerequisites or the names are quite long, if you put a backslash, that allows you to continue the line. 
Then what we will do is I will copy this R line and we just want one tab and we're going to render not that file, but we're going to use one of the automatic variables, uh, which is the uh, less than sign. Um, the one with the small sign, the small edge next to the dollar sign. And what that does is that means take this value, whatever it ends up being, and shove it in there, right? So we'll go ahead and save that. So what I'll then do is I'll go ahead and delete all this text and save it. And you might be saying, well, we've also got this rule here for creating a readme.md file. So what make will do is it'll look for the most specific target first and then use that rule. Um, and so for all of our exploratory files, it'll come back and it will then use this. So we might need to revise this again in the future, but we'll see. Um, something else that stands out to me is that we don't want rndb, we want rndb.esv.countTibble. And so uh, that matches this target here. And of course, then we're gonna wanna change all of our, our markdown documents to also have ESV. So I'll go ahead and open these up. And I guess I could have done a find all, replace all, um, but uh, shouldn't be too bad to go ahead and modify these. And so of course we're gonna rerun everything uh, using make. And if we run into any errors, it will definitely tell us that there are errors. Um, in a way, this refactoring is good because it's forcing us to make sure that our work is reproducible, right? We should be getting the same results that we had initially um, uh, after we've refactored everything. The refactoring should not change the results because we're not really changing any of the code. We're changing what we're calling things. Okay, good. So we've seen how we can simplify that long list of like six different rules we had for generating those exploratory data files. And so we are in good shape. Um, let's go ahead and think about how we would go about regenerating uh, saying one of these files. So I'm gonna copy this first exploratory file that I deleted and I'll do make dash N space and then the target. And that dash N is gonna tell us everything that make needs to run to regenerate all this stuff, right? Um, one of the things I notice at the end of generating that is that it then goes back and deletes all of the dependencies it had to create, okay? And so um, again, remember make was used, was created to compile source code, to create a final executable. And there's no reason when you're creating that final executable to keep track of all the prerequisites, right? Or the intermediate targets or what they call secondary targets. For our data analysis, we'd like to keep that around. So what we can do is at the very top of, of our make file, I can put dot secondary with a colon. And so this is a special rule that's built into make. And this will, this one line, this dot secondary colon will tell make to keep all of the secondary files. So now if I redo that make dash n, we now see that we no longer have that remove line, right? So we ran the same code, all we changed was that one line and that remove goes away. So this would uh, generate everything to then to create, generate all of the files we need to then um, generate this output file, okay? So um, one other thing that I wanna show you about make before I do that is that uh, it's possible to create what are called uh, phony rules, um, and these are rules that um, don't really have um, a target and don't necessarily, or I guess, yeah, they don't really have a target, right? So what you'll sometimes see when you're compiling code is you'll say like make all or make install. Um, and that is not a real, you're not creating something called install or all, um, or sometimes you'll do make clean. You're not creating something called clean you're following the rule called all or clean. And I'm gonna create one called exploratory, exploratory. And um, it's gonna be, the target is gonna be called exploratory. And then the colon is going to be um, all these MD files I, I deleted. Um, and so maybe what I'll do, because I'm a little la lazy, I'm a lot lazy. Um, 
So I'll do git status and I'll pipe that to grep and I will then pull out all the things that end in MD and uh, okay. So the backslash forces it to be a period rather than a meta character. Don't worry if that's over your head. Um, I'm going to copy this in here and get rid of all that deleted stuff. All right. And I'll go ahead and tab these all in a notch and I'll put um, the backslash at the end of each line. Oh, too many there. Save that. And now if I do make exploratory, it says nothing to be done for exploratory, the directory. And oops, it's running. I didn't want it to run. Ah, so if I do make dash n exploratory, um, it will then uh, run all these things. One of the concerns though, is that um, exploratory is also the name of a directory as we saw. And so what I'd like to do is use another special rule called dot phony. Okay. And so that tells, tells make that exploratory is a phony target. It's not a real target to be generated. And, um, and so now if I do make an exploratory, um, it will then regenerate all these things. I think I hit control C quick enough um, before all this stuff um, got very far that I didn't cause any problems. Um, I think it got into V19. So I'll look at LS data V19 and I see that I still have some stuff there. So I'll go ahead and remove that um, RNDB stuff. And again, if I do make an exploratory, um, it says doesn't have a rule to make ah this ASV species coverage needed by exploratory. So let me, um, ah, when I copy it and paste it, I left it in the ASVs. So I'll save that. Look at this. And now the error messages go away. I think it'll work. So I'll go ahead and do make exploratory. And this is going to take a while to run. So I'll run this. And I, uh, if you're, if you're doing this alongside of me, that's awesome. Um, I'm going to do some creative editing so that we don't just stare at a blank screen or watch the scroll here for a few minutes. While it's running and you're looking for something to do, uh, instead of going um, and reading the web or checking your Insta, your uh, Facebook or Twitter accounts, um, go ahead and like and subscribe this video. Be sure you click on that bell icon so you know when the next video is released. Um, and we'll be back in just a couple seconds through the wonders of editing. So it appears that we ran into a bit of a problem um, processing through the V19 data. And if I do ls-lth data V19, um, I see that there is count.tibble, but ESV count.tibble doesn't exist. All right. So let's double check um, where we generated that. Uh, so that's there, rndb esv count.tibble. Um, and it was coming out of code count unique seeks.sh. So let's code, come up, code uh, count unique seeks. So it brings in the target. And. generates the unique file and uh, I think our stub might not be happy. So let's practice, let's try this out running the code through um, each line. And so I'm going to, so I think instead of now that I think about it a little bit more that I don't want it to, I don't want the target to be dot ESV dot unique align. Um, I want the tibble file to be dot unique dot ESV. So this, where I run the convert count table to tibble dot R, that should output um, ESV count dot tibble. I think this should work now. I'm going to go ahead and give it another run, um, and we'll go ahead and do make 
exploratory oh, without that forward slash and we'll see how things go. All right, so it looks like we ran through and got to rendering the exploratory data analysis files. There are no other errors uh, further up that I can see, but it hit this first one and it's complaining that this file doesn't exist. Uh, the esv.counttibble file doesn't exist in data processed. So let me look and see what's in data processed. And I see sure enough, it's rndb.counttibble. Um, so let me go back to my code and this was generated in the combined count tibble files. And let's see, I see sure enough, we had rndb.count.tibble. That should be ESV count tibble. Let me double check in our make file that we have that, that so that's right there. So I'll go ahead and remove data processed rndb count tibble. And then if I do make.n exploratory, Again, without that slash, um, we see that I'll go ahead and combine it and then I'll re-render it. So again, fits and starts, but because we have make, it allows us to figure out where our dependencies aren't quite where we need them to be and how we need to modify our code to get it all to work smoothly. All right, so we hit another snag here um, in generating the first of the exploratory files. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up that R Markdown document Let's see, that was 10.5. I guess it wasn't the first one. Um, I'm kind of wondering what happened with these others that they, they went through so okay, well if, if there was a problem here. So maybe there's a problem with my code. So I'm gonna start by um, doing something a little bit different. Um, I'm gonna run R from the terminal here. We could do it in R Studio. Um, for these types of things where I'm trying to debug things in my make file, um, I like to, it's easier for me sometimes to do it in the terminal, and it's just good to know how to do it. So I'll go ahead and copy and paste those in. Let me look at metadata ESV to make sure that all looks good. Um, and one thing I notice, sure enough, is that this region column is supposed to be a region, but it's actually um, text. It's, it's the file path, I think. So if I look at metadata ESV, um, select region, I, I have the paths. And so that tells me that um, something didn't get parsed right when we pooled the data. So let's look back here and we see sure enough, um, you know, we, we parse out the region here in this parentheses. And so I need to have rndb.esv.count table there. Uh, let me quit out of R. Um, we see all the stuff we've changed. Um, if I do make make dash n exploratory that uh, um, we see everything that needs to get rerun and so we'll go ahead and do that and hopefully this does the trick well wonderful it looks like everything finally went through without a hitch um, no errors and we're in good shape so that makes me very happy <laughs> let's go ahead and do get status to see where we're at I'm mainly looking at these deleted lines to understand maybe what have we deleted or gotten rid of um, that we didn't intend to, right? Um, and so those all look pretty good. Um, one thing that occurred to me as I was running all this that I, I don't know that I did update is my readme file. Uh, so if I do not get make readme.md, uh, that needed to be re-rendered, okay? So everything looks good and like everything's been updated. Um, again, the value of having version control is that uh, we've accidentally deleted something like we saw before with one of those readme files. It was easy enough to do git restore and to bring it back to life, so to speak. So I will go ahead and do um, add all this stuff. So all that stuff, oh, I guess I didn't add the code or the, I thought I did. Oh, I guess because it didn't like one of the arguments, it didn't like all the arguments. So I'll do git add make file, readme, md, and code. Good, everything's added. Um, I'm gonna add this to the previous commit because I think everything looks great. So I'll do git commit hyphen hyphen amend. This brings us, um, 
into nano um, and I'm going to say rename ASVs to ESVs and regenerate all data. Okay. And save that, exit, and we're good. Um, ah, I need to amend that again because I want to say closes number 33. And then we will do git checkout master git merge issue 33. Um, because of the way that timestamps work on version control on Git when you merge a branch like we just did, um, that actually screws up all of our dependencies. So if we wanted to be, we wanted to double check that everything was right, we would want to rerun now, make exploratory. Um, I'm not going to subject you to watching that or sitting through that again. Um, everything will work. Uh, so I'll go ahead and do Git push, and uh, life should be good from here on in. So again, uh, not a big concept that we covered in today's episode. I was changing the name from ASV to ESV throughout the project. And that gave us a good opportunity to delete all the intermediate files and then to see how we can use make to regenerate those intermediate files, make sure that they don't get deleted um, and make sure that we've got all our dependencies set up correctly so that if we reran it, then everything would work well. Maybe in a future episode, what I should do is accidentally delete my whole project directory and show you how I can do a git clone where I get a copy of the repository from git and then I can do make exploratory again and regenerate everything. Uh, so again, this combination of version control and make are really instrumental to me for my doing a reproducible data analysis and I hope you find the same thing. So keep practicing these concepts. Uh, don't be afraid to make large overhauls of your project. Again, using tools with like Make and Git will make it a lot easier and a lot safer. So please tell your friends about these Code Club episodes. Uh, if, th if this is your first one, welcome. Feel free to go back and check out previous episodes. We're going to keep going now, talking about Amplicon sequence variants for real um, and how we might generate those using the uh, genome data that we've gotten from the RNDB. So we'll see you next time for another episode of Code Club.